What is up guys, it is Nick, and we are uh, back to break down the main slate for week three. This is our early look. I have a tentative schedule now for everything, so Mondays will be recap videos, Tuesdays will be preview, Wednesdays will be random, uh, it could be literally anything, um, could just be a showdown breakdown for Thursday if I don't have anything else. Uh, I still want to do showdown slate videos. There probably will be more reserved for th Saturday, or for Sundays and Monday slates opposed to the Thursdays, uh, unless the Thursday one goes, I, I can record it on Wednesday or today. Uh, the Fantasy Draft Builder, if I decide to do that, or that may be a showdown sl slate video on Thursdays. Fridays will be the FanDuel Lineup Builder, Saturdays will be Final Breakdowns, and then Sunday will be a betting video um, talking about the different stuff I like in the betting world. Uh, but let's hop into this. So, at the quarterback position, our top priced options over 7K are Patrick Mahomes and Aaron Rodgers. As always, I'm a cash game guy, so we're focusing more on cash games than anything else. And uh, I don't really pay up for quarterback. The first quarterback I would consider to pay up for is Drew Brees. He's 6400 uh, against the Atlanta Falcons. His top two options should avoid Desmond Trufant for most of the game. And without the linebackers and safeties that they're missing, I believe they're missing four linebackers and a, two safeties. Uh, no, KZ got ejected, so KZ will be back. So it's one safety and four linebackers that they're missing, I believe. Carson wins first game back. It's a decent matchup against Indy, but I just, I, I don't know. For 200 more, I'll just play Breeze. I really have it pretty much narrowed down already early in the week. It'll depend. We'll see how it goes later on. But it'll either be Drew Brees, Cam Newton, who provides you such a nice floor at 6,000. He needs 18. If he's going to give me, I'll say three points on the ground. Three points on the ground plus whatever he does touchdown-wise. He's already, he's already partially the way there. He throws for 250 yards. Puts two in the end zone. He's pretty much at value. I really do like Cam Newton this week. And what should be a competitive game against Cincinnati. I do like Russ. I always like Russ. Uh, but that offensive line really worries me. And so I'll have to consider that. But think about it at 6K for Russell Wilson. He provides you a nice rushing floor as well. Didn't show it off as much so far this season. Only 17 and 5 yards. But I think as this season wears on and he realizes just how terrible that offensive line is week in and week out, and when they start getting into more, I don't know, once they start getting demolished, like when they play the Rams or something, I think Russ will have to run more. As bad as that team is, for 6K, Russ has pretty much found value. Um, even in a terrible game yesterday against Chicago, he still almost found value at 6.6K. So that's why I uh, I do have a lot of interest in him. I'll see what I think throughout the week, but I do like him. Um, but I do think Cam is a little bit safer overall. If we're going way dumpster diving down here, I'm going to go Matt Ryan. 5700 is a very fair price for him uh, in a really good matchup in the Dome against the New Orleans Saints. There's not really anybody, anybody lower uh, maybe I would consider Case Keenum, uh, 5200 isn't a bad price for him. But I think I pretty much have it narrowed down to Matt Ryan, Russell Wilson, Cam Newton, and Drew Brees at this point at quarterback. We'll go ahead and throw one of them in the lineup and we'll kind of show you how. We'll go with the middle of the road, we'll go with Russ for now. Moving on to halfback, I think there's a very clear spend up and that's Alvin Kamara. The Atlanta Falcons gave up 14 receptions to Christian McCaffrey last week. And since the start of the 20, 2017, 2018 or 2017 season, one of those, I guess this is the 2018. I mean, like, the start of last year or the year before. So the start of 2016 or 2017 season. The Falcons rank dead last in yards uh, fantasy production to running backs through the air. They are missing four linebackers, like I said, and a safety. So clearly they're going to be worse than even that. Kamara is essentially the wide receiver, too, in that offense. <clears throat> it was a little bit more of a quiet game for him last week. Only six catches for 53 yards. No touchdowns, but he was still able to put up 18 points. He finds the end zone once. It's 24 points. 
Maybe he catches one more ball. He didn't have a really nice reception like he did in week one, so maybe he tacked on another reception for 25 yards. Uh, then you're looking at like 26, 27, uh, which I think he can very easily get to in this matchup against Atlanta. Moving on, other running backs. I don't think I'm paying for Todd Gurley on DraftKings. Maybe on FanDuel I'll consider Todd Gurley, but we'll talk about more about that in the FanDuel lineup builder. McCaffrey and Elliott, I think they're just too... They're just kind of in no man's zone. I like Christian McCaffrey for the receiving upside, but I think I would just take the discount on Melvin Gordon and what should be an interesting matchup. I'll have to see... I'll have to take a look more at it and see if they'll get down huge in this, if they'll just go Austin Eckler or what they'll do there. I like the price on David Johnson, more of a GPP play than in cash. After that, we're coming down here to the Jordan Howard, Tevin Coleman range. I really like Tevin Coleman. I don't know about playing Jordan Howard. Um, I mean, if he's only going to get 14, 15 carries, it, it's a little concerning because Tarek Cohen was getting some run. Four targets is nice. It gives you a little bit of a, like a six-point floor, but if he doesn't do anything else, you're really in trouble. So I probably won't go there. I can get the same upside from Tevin Coleman and, the, and a higher floor, I think. Uh, than Jordan Howard. So we'll plug in Tevin Coleman for now. <clears throat> and we'll talk about a few more running backs. I do like Chris Thompson, but for 6,300, I'm not sure I want to go there. Um, if he's going to get seven targets uh, and some rushes, we'll say he gets 10 touches per game split evenly between rushing and receiving. It gives him a nice floor of like eight points, but now that he's 6,300, you're looking for 18-ish points from him and I'm not sure you can rely on that. I think there are better options. One of my favorite options this coming week is at 5,900. Gio Bernard should be the lead back for the Cincinnati Bengals. And so I, th I think we can pretty much lock him in for a floor relatively similar to those guys with all the rushing. Uh, so I think we can probably expect mid-teens, maybe 14 rushes for Gio. So if he turns those into... We'll keep it moderate, 50 yards. If he gets 50 yards on the ground, six receptions through the air for 40 yards, that's a floor of like 15 without touchdowns and with upside for more. That's kind of where I stack him up. Um, I'll see a little bit um, what they, uh, how they exactly played Gio Bernard. I'll watch a little film on that, see how they used him uh, with the mix and injury. But... Uh, that's going to pretty much do it for running back. There is some dumpster diving you can do. Yeldon, if uh, if Fournette is out, I could see playing DJ Yeldon um, at 5,100. He's a nice value saver. Philip Lindsay at 4,600 is interesting, but probably won't go there. Um, Royce Freeman has been getting the goal line work, so I could see a viability of maybe a GPP dart on him. But uh, we're going to save tight, or wide receiver for a second. We're going to talk about tight end. At this point in the week, with me locking in Alvin Kamara, there's really only one tight end that I can play. And that is all the way down here. Good old, at 2,800, Ricky Seals-Jones. Six targets in both weeks. He just hasn't seen the yardage. Um, for 2,800, I'm looking for like 10 points. If he can get four grabs for 60 yards, which is more of an appropriate amount or one grab for a touchdown, I, I I think he can pay off the value. Even if he gets me six points, it opens up enough for me that I think I think it's worth it. Now, the topper, the, the topper, the higher end options that I do like uh, that you can consider for, for cash games, I would say about the highest I would go is Trey Burton. Um, he had a touchdown yesterday and he had four targets, only 20 yards, but still a decent game for Trey Burton and for 4K... You'll need about the same game. Um, we just aren't seeing the same tight end production as we're usually. I do like Will Disley. He is being integrated in that offense. Five targets per game. Three receptions. If you eliminate the touchdown, this is still a seven-point game. You're getting close to value there. And so he's also a viable option. I do think double tight end is viable this week. Uh, if you go like Ricky Seals-Jones, Disley, you can get my favorite receiver of the week. We're going to plug in a defense. So right now, I like the Titans. It doesn't really matter. Um, 
defense and quarterback and defense and quarterback right now are kind of up in the air. Um, you could plug in literally anybody in those ranges that I like, but uh, this gives you 5,700 at receiver. One of my favorite plays is all the way down here. How much is he? Where is he? Tyler Boyd at 3,700. Saw five targets and nine targets. If we put it in the fair amount zone, I would say six targets maybe in this next game. If he catches four of them, four for 30 is seven points. Not great, but you would take it at 3,700. He's a viable option. We'll plug him in for right now. It bumps it up to 6,700, and that allows you to come up to my favorite receiver of the week, and that's Michael Thomas. 30 targets in the first two weeks, and if you plug him in, you still have enough money to actually make a team. Uh, and this is why I like a Tyler Boyd. Um, I'll go over a couple other guys I really like. I love Julio Jones this week. If I don't go Michael Thomas, I'll take the $1,000 savings and go with Julio Jones. I think you'll get Marcus Lattimore shadow coverage, which is why I'll probably reserve Julio for GPPs, a GPP lineup. But I do really love Julio. But uh, as we continue throughout the year, you'll realize I love Julio pretty much every week. Um, I like Stefan Diggs far more than I like Adam Thielen this week. But it is Buffalo. They could put up crazy numbers in the first half, but then be pulled in the second. It is Buffalo. So not quite sure it's a cash game viable decision there. Um, other in here, there's not a whole lot that I'm looking at at up top. I just don't have the salary if I'm going to jam in Alvin Kamara. So that means we're coming all the way down here to Tyler Lockett is my next one. If Fitz plays, I do like Fitz, but I'm not sure if Fitz is going to play. So I like Tyler Lockett. Wide receiver number one without Doug Baldwin, and it looks like Russ is looking for him. Um, when Russ gets in trouble, he's looking for Lockett. He's taking deep shots to Lockett, so I'm willing to uh, take the shot and play Lockett. He saw seven targets in the first game with Doug Baldwin completely gone. Um, so it's all only 60 yards, but had a 20-yard touchdown. Um, and at 5-3... <clears throat> can get you 15 points if you eliminate the touchdowns add a few yards uh which is probably the expectation for Lockett um other people in this range I do like Crabtree and Funchess um I probably won't play Crabtree probably play Willie Sneed over Crabtree but I do like Crabtree this week uh I do like Funchess uh John Brown I like him too. It just depends on the Baltimore side who's matching up with Roby and Chris Harris, who's getting the third corner. Um, I do like Ted Ginn, but I think I like D.D. Westbrook more. Uh, we'll talk about Geronimo Allison in a second because he's probably my favorite play down here. Uh, B. Marsh, probably wide receiver two on the Seahawks. Arguably wide receiver one being a possession receiver and Lockett being more of a burner. Probably rank them, even though on the depth chart you would rank Lockett 1. I think Marshall is more of the number one target share guy. Uh, coming down here, I kind of like Paul Richardson, but not too much. Willie Sneed um, saw eight targets and six targets. Uh, if you can find his way into the end zone, he's a nice value. Needs only about 12 points, so if you could get six for 60, uh, it'd be a nice, nice day. But four receptions and five receptions. Cam Meredith, I believe, is going to play. Um, if Well, I mean, if he does play, he's a really interesting play at 3,800, but he keeps being a healthy scratch, so not entirely sure what they're doing with Cameron Meredith. I don't know if he's being lazy or what the heck he's doing, but they need to, they need to, let, they need to free him. Uh, but we'll go back and talk about my final wide receiver, which we'll plug on into this lineup, is Geronimo Allison. He picks on Washington, whose secondary is nothing special. He's seen six and eight targets, five receptions and six receptions, um, 60 yards both weeks, 17 and 12 points. Get about 12 points from Geronimo Allison. I think we walk away happy. Uh, but that's the first look lineup for the week, guys. I hope you all enjoyed I think tomorrow I don't have anything random planned, so I think it'll probably be a showdown slate breakdown for the Thursday game, but I'm not entirely sure yet, but keep an eye out for that. As always, these come out in the afternoon. I try to release the different uh, videos related to DFS in the afternoons, and then the gaming videos come out at 8 or 9 at night. But yeah, that's going to do it, guys. Drop a like if you did, subscribe if you haven't, and stay tuned for the next video. Peace out.